Let me turn on the mic. Hi, how's it going? Hello. <laughs> Tonight we're going to talk about a very interesting topic about how to be your own doctor. Okay. Uh, and that does not mean that we're diagnosing for ourselves. It doesn't mean we're treating ourselves. We're not giving ourselves chemo and everything else. And it doesn't mean you throw away your MD. It doesn't mean you throw away your chiropractor. Or your meds. Or your meds or anything like that. Okay, especially your meds. If any, any doctors put you on any meds, Always check with that doctor to get them right. off the meds, help you get off the meds. Don't just do it yourself because you don't know all the side effects that could happen, and they yeah. do. So if you do want to get off meds, talk to your doctor. If that doctor says, no, you got to stay on those, find another doctor and help or let that doctor help you get off them. Never try and do that yourself. Right. Okay, so that's uh, what we want to do. So again, hello, welcome. I'm Scott Laird, Jody Laird. Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us tonight. And so, yeah, what we're going to be talking about is uh, we're going to be taking a lot of information from uh, Dr. Blaylock's wellness report. And uh, this was an interesting one that he sent out in August. Uh, basically, he said, how to be your own doctor. I thought that was great because I have actually a book on my shelf uh, by the same topic. How to be your own doctor. And again, this is not how to diagnose or drug yourself or anything like that. This is basically how to shore up your immune system uh, to protect yourself. We've been talking about this, you know, during the COVID-19 thing. We brought this up a few times, but this will protect you from everything. And I, I look at the COVID-19 thing and, and I think um, to myself, remember in the early 80s, uh, even Eddie Murphy made fun of it in one of his comedy routines. What? And that was AIDS. When AIDS first came out, right. everybody thought that everything you touched turned to AIDS. Absolutely. Right? That that only only homosexual people had AIDS. And if you touched somebody or kissed them on the cheek or you'd, you'd go home with AIDS on you. And it, was, it just, everybody freaked out. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, am I getting lesions on me? And, every, and not only that, that it was, was, you remember the pandemonium that it was going to spread across the whole world and oh, yeah. it would be our demise. Right. Well, you hardly ever hear about it anymore. Right. It's still there. No, guess what's going to happen to COVID-19, guys? I swear to you, this is the same thing that's going to happen. Everybody's freaking out because nobody really knows what it is. That was a problem with AIDS. Never, nobody, remember, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. Remember it hopped from... I still don't even know what the truth is, but then we were told it was green monkeys. It came over from green monkeys, right? And so everybody's like, oh my God, it hopped species. Gee, COVID-19 hopped species. And again, we freaked out because nobody had to deal with it before and nobody's sure what to do with it. But you know, it doesn't matter. I still maintain all disease is the same thing from the common cold to stage four cancer. It's basically malfunctioning cells. And all you have to do is get those cells back in alignment and it's not a hard thing to do. That's what we're going to talk to you about uh, about tonight. And actually, we have 14 tips that you can follow tonight. Okay. Yeah, so we better get on it. So here's uh, basically the one question I wanted to ask, I put right at the top of this thing, I wanted to ask before we get started, who is responsible for your health? I mean, is it your doctor? Is it your pharmacist? Who is it? Is it your mom and dad? Uh, you know, are, are, are your genes responsible because something was passed down to you? Uh, in very rare cases, yeah, maybe, but there's a lot of things we can control. The very common diseases that, that kill most Americans, most people around the, in the Western world is cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, all these type of things. Those are not passed down, okay? Those are not passed down. Now, you can be... You susceptible can, to having the same issue as your parents. Right. You can have a genetic predisposition, but Correct. guess what? Nutrition controls genes, genetic expression. So you may have that gene that says you're going to get breast cancer. 100% you're going to get breast cancer. You might as well just cut them off now and save yourself the trouble later, which Angelina Jolie did a few years ago. Right. But nutrition controls genes. You, you may have that gene, but... According to how you eat, how you live, your stress level, all those things you can take care of, you can prevent that gene from ever expressing itself. Right. It's like diabetes. It's type like two. Right. Type, right. Exactly. You can. It's like holding on to a bomb that will never go off. I because because you've taken the fuse out. Right. I That's definitely what it is. have that running in my family. Right. And I refuse to go down that path. Diabetes. Right. Right. And same thing with, with mine. Well, mine's pretty obvious, right? I've talked about it many times. Colon cancer. Both of my parents Both had colon parents cancer. Both parents within a year and a half of each other. Had and colon you, cancer. And you refused to go down that path. And your parents right. refused to go down that path again. Right. And right. And so they changed their diet and lifestyle. And guess what? Every time they had, uh, they had colonoscopies, uh, they had the colon cancer. I didn't learn about this type of stuff for a few years. And then I learned and taught them and, and they adopted it. And during those 
during those in-between years, they always had to have a colonoscopy every year to check right. up on their cancer, see mm -hmm. if it was still there. Well, they always had polyps. Dad especially had polyps. They always have to pull them out, check them out, that kind of thing. No, you're fine. Okay, a big sigh of relief every year. And then as soon as they started doing a plant-based diet, told them all kinds of stuff. I'll get into it later some other time. But essentially from that point forward, every time they had a colonoscopy, no polyps to be found right. ever again. And, and they were in their 70s exactly, when they started that. That's what I was going to say. And they were in their 70s and 80s when polyps are pretty much a regular thing when mm -hmm. people get colonoscopies at that age. Right. Now, yeah. as you know, my dad just passed away. It was a massive heart attack. Came out of nowhere. It was... It was an unfortunate uh, combination of a couple of things, uh, supplements, drugs, not understanding that he had heart heart uh, issues, that kind of thing. But it had nothing to do with the cancer that he had at age 66, 19 years ago. So, and he was totally fine up to that day. And so, you know, he went out on top and that's the way we all want to go, right? Go in our sleep. We want to go instantly, that kind of thing. Nobody wants to be suffering sitting in a hospital bed. And so that's what we're going to teach you <clears throat> how to avoid tonight. So... Who's ultimately ultimately responsible? You are. I am. You are. Right. We're each responsible for our own health. So here's what we want to get into. And everything we do every day, you're either feeding disease or fighting it. You got it. That's a very good point, Jody. So like every time you put your fork in food and you eat it, uh, it's almost like the analogy of uh, you cut your finger, which I did today, by the way. I was cleaning a, a blender. Oh, nice. And I, I, it was a new blender with new blades. <laughs> and I was washing out the bottom of it. Wow. And uh, yeah, basically I got sliced right underneath the cuticle. We have a good blender. Oh my gosh, this thing is awful. It's just, anyway, <laughs> it's great, but it's awful when you cut yourself. <laughs> Anyhow, so um, yeah, it's like cutting yourself. It's like cutting yourself and it's like me taking this Band-Aid off and then cutting myself again every single day. Is that ever going to heal if I do that? No. No. And it's like every time we have a chance to put our fork into food, we are either cutting ourselves or healing ourselves. Think of it that way, okay? Mm. So here's, I need to take, I need you to take, keep that off of there because mm -hmm. I need to use the mouse here. Okay, so here is the number one thing to do. Speaking of COVID, speaking of colds, summer colds. By the way, you can get a summer cold out of nowhere. And here's how. If you go to the beach, get sunburned, and then you have like pizza that night or, uh, or a hamburger or something like that. Gluten. Or gluten. If you have any kind of... Grains. Uh, not, well, very specific grains of wheat. Wheat. If you Got have it. anything with wheat in it, so the hamburger bun, the crust on the, on the pizza, that type of thing, uh, the, the breakfast cereal they have the next morning, you can develop what you think is a summer cold. And that's because the same thing, vitamin F, uh, which is basically the, the oils in, in your body. So the vitamin, for a long story short, so vitamin F, there is a vitamin F. Um, your body uses all vitamin F available <clears throat> to take care of a sunburn. Okay. Vitamin F is the same thing needed to metabolize wheat. So if your body is busy using busy using all of that vitamin F to heal the sunburn, it has nothing left to metabolize the wheat. And so it reacts with the immune system, overreacts, creates an immune response, looks like a cold, there's your summer cold. So if you get mm. sunburned, avoid, uh, I would say all processed grains to your point, but especially uh, wheat. So there you go, little tip for you. Okay. Now, here's the first thing you wanna do if you get uh, a cold of any kind at any time of year, you want to fast when you are sick. Hmm. I didn't know sense. this for the longest time. And then as soon as you get like that first sneeze out of nowhere and you get a sniffle and your eyes start watering, you're like, uh oh, here we go. I've got a cold. And everybody gets cold. It's okay. It's, it's practice for the immune system. It's actually okay. So if that happens, start stop eating. I mean, start stop eating immediately. Start <laughs> fasting immediately. Stop eating. And I swear to you, within 24 or 48 hours, if you can just hold off, just drink water. And if you have to eat something, go raw foods. We're going to get into right. that in a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. in a minute here. Uh, but if you can do that, uh, within 24 or 48 hours, that cold will be gone. Because what happens is, when you involve food, when you're, when you, uh, well, if, you, if you're starting to get a cold, and your immune system is busy, and you eat uh, cooked foods, your immune system gets involved. Why? Because Raw foods have enzymes and cooked foods don't. So raw enzymes in f raw foods break down the food for you. It sort of gives it a little bit pre-digestion before your stomach takes right. care of it and then you know, you're on your way and it's a lot easier to digest. Now cooked foods, when you cook foods, enzymes die at 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which means anything cooked, you know, what's the average temperature you put to bake something? 325, 350? Yep. Mm -hmm. so, 
enzymes are dead. Right. So that means you can still eat the food. There's still some nutrition there, but the enzymes are dead. So what does that mean? Your body has to break down the food with its own enzymes. Your stomach acid isn't the only thing involved here. It's the enzymes. And the enzymes come from your pancreas. When you take enzymes from your pancreas to digest the food, it creates inflammation. The immune system sees inflammation as, uh-oh, we got a job to do over here. So right. what does it do? Your immune system get, gets diverted from taking care of you and getting rid of that cold to now help your pancreas. So basically, you're splitting the energy between your immune system when you eat cooked food because you're going to your your body's trying to heal itself of the cooked food or the the effects of the cooked food and now your cold is just going to or whatever it is is just going to last longer because your immune system is preoccupied. It's not 100% focused on getting you well. So would you say it's fair to say that, you know, I've heard it over and over and over and we live by this, that you should eat something raw every meal and you yes. should eat that first. Mm -hmm. Your raw food, which a salad, if you're going to have a salad with every meal, you're going to eat that first. It's going to develop its own enzymes to eat everything else that you've got. It, it, ha it already has its own enzymes. That's what yep. I'm saying. But it has its own mm -hmm. enzymes to keep eating. So yes. you put that in first. Yep. And then you eat your cooked food. That's why the salad comes first in a restaurant. Yeah, and and yeah, and the enzymes are especially important there because when you first start eating, your your stomach doesn't have a whole lot of. You know, we always hear about stomach acid. There's not a whole lot of acid in your stomach when you're not eating something. Within a few minutes, like. 10 minutes after you start eating, then the stomach starts pumping in more acid and more acid right. uh, to get rid of the food. So you need something that has its own enzymes right away to start that pre-digestion. Right. Otherwise, it's just too much and you're, oh, you're going to feel bloated. And if you and dilute it with water, if you eat water, yeah, drink don't... water with a meal, it does not do you any good. Right. I know it's hard for people to get and for people to change their mentality, but we don't drink with a meal. No. If we drink, we drink A little after. bit to wash it down if you have but to. But I don't drink anything with a meal. Yeah, I, rarely do I either. Because you want your own stomach acid and your own enzymes yeah. to do the work. Now, if you are going to drink something, uh, ironically, drink something that's a little acidic like coffee. Mm. Something like that. Mm. But try, try and avoid it as much as possible. Okay, right. so number two. Uh, oh, by the way, so number one, here's something interesting. Um, the common cold virus r regarding number one uh, to... To fast. fast. Uh, something Dr. Uh, Blaylock says here is that the common cold virus has an 8% mortality rate in nursing homes as high or higher than COVID-19, uh, just by the way, just so you wow. know. And the nursing homes, guys, it still is the place where most people died of this, of this uh, pandemic yeah. is in the nursing homes. Older people in nursing homes, it, it's unfortunate it happened, but it's 50% or more was in the nursing homes. Okay, so number two. Um, yes, eat un raw, unprocessed foods. Which um, we just talked about yes, a little bit. Yes, uh, something to add to that. Raw vegetables and fruits are the best way to quickly strengthen the mineral reserves, which are necessary for immunity. This is from something that Anne Malkmus of uh, the Hallelujah Diet mm. put on her Facebook page today. So thank you, Anne. Yes. And she said this was from a French naturopath. And he basically, uh, the first part of this that I didn't highlight, uh, he basically just says, he's smacking his head going, what is wrong with people with this COVID-19 thing? Why are we looking from the outside? I mean, we said that, what, last week? Yeah. Why are we looking from the outside in? Masks and wash your hands. It's all, you know, good stuff. But we need to be taking our take care of ourselves from the inside out. That's the more important, more powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what he's saying too. Uh, now, number three. Number three, we need to uh, really uh, reiterate for those of you who are addicted to your... Uh, also, I want to say about raw foods. Yes. You get your minerals from vegetables. Yeah. You get your vitamins from fruit mm -hmm. more than not. So if you're eating enough fruits and vegetables... You're getting it all. You're getting it all. If you're yep. not eating any fruits and vegetables, you're not really getting any of it. Right. And we see... Unless you take a pill, which is just the eh. tip of the iceberg for the RDA. A pill, even a, even a good supplement is called a supplement because it supplements what you are supposed to be doing for the greater part of your diet and lifestyle. It's not right. the answer. Number three, stop watching the news. Mm. For goodness sake, please. Why? It's not just because it's annoying and it's over and over again and all it's COVID, 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 COVID all over the place. Not just that. It's because 
Fear is an immunosuppressant. Hmm. And anxiety weakens you the more you worry. So if you're watching the news going, oh my gosh, uh, like what was it yesterday? Our, our governor in North Carolina announced five more weeks of five phase two. weeks. Are you serious? No more. Why? No gyms for five more weeks. I'm sorry. This is stupid. Not to get political. But anyway, so anyway. So stop watching the news. It makes me aggravated. Aggravation also causes immunosuppressant <laughs> suppression. So I need to stop listening to that and just go, ah, whatever. And okay. especially news I'm still that working is from home. slanted. L let me just say, news that is slanted, yeah. especially not slanted the way that you want it to be slanted, <gasps> raises your blood. Yeah, um, whatever side you, you sit on for that, that debate. Find right? something that's not slanted either way. Just, yeah. Just the facts. Which just, is... Does that even exist? Yeah, it exists right here, number four. Walk and pray. Mm. Okay? Seriously, regardless of what what faith or religion, uh, praying is, of, of course, I'm going to espouse that serving the king of kings, Jehovah, is the best. <laughs> because it gives you true peace. But if you find peace and meditation and yoga and all these type of things and Eastern whatever, okay, fine, whatever, go, go hard. But it's... Walk and pray. Walking because walking gets the blood moving. It actually releases toxins. And I notice that I get all antsy and uptight. And you ever notice when you're working long hours that you just you can't sleep and you're uptight and you just you can't let go of that, yeah, that just that that anxiety and tightness and, and aggravation in your body. It's because you're not moving the blood. As soon as you start moving the blood, you start moving the lymph. The lymph carries all the toxins out. You start sweating. Ah, it's out now. All of a sudden, you can think clear. You ever notice that when you're on a walk, you have your best ideas? Yes. That's why. And we have our best the blood's moving. our best communication as a husband and wife yeah. when we're walking. We're starting to walk uh, now. Uh, we're starting a program, which we're going to tell you more about as we go along here. But yeah. uh, one of the major things is walking first thing in the morning. That's what we're doing. For an hour. For an hour. And it's, uh, it's wow. It's I mean, it's not hard work. It's just like where can I find an hour? <laughs> right. That's the well, hard part. It's at 6 a.m. is where it is or even earlier. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so walking and praying is, is a good thing. Uh, prayer and meditation with physical exercise strengthens the immune system. Again, it helps the immune system. doesn't just move the blood around and the lymph as well. Yeah. helps your immune system. How about that? Amazing. Okay. Here's another one that we always talk about. Number five, get more vitamin D3. Yes. Okay. The most common condition, says Dr. Russell Blaylock, associated with a, a high risk of death from COVID-19, he's just getting right to the point, obesity, diabetes, lung disease, i.e. smoking, uh, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease. They're all associated with what? Low vitamin D3 levels, okay? So you raise your vitamin D3 levels. We brought this up, especially with uh, the most obvious one is breast cancer with women, especially uh, black women. You got to get your vitamin D3 levels up. Everybody needs to get their vitamin D3 le levels Absolutely. up. Absolutely. I've actually uh, heard it said from, I believe it was uh, Dr. Joseph Mercola. Uh, regardless of what you think of Dr. Mercola, I think he's brilliant. I think he gets slammed unnecessarily. <laughs> but he says that everybody below the latitude of Atlanta, Georgia needs supplemental D3, period. Below? Below the latitude. Or above it. Above. I'm sorry. Unless you live below the latitude of, right. of Atlanta. Which is pretty much... It's a lot of us. Most of us. Most all of, of us. Canada. All, yeah. Us included. Yes. And we get a lot of sun here. A lot. And we it, do. that still includes us. Yep. And, and he's mostly talking about the winter months. So now get out and enjoy the sun. And don't burn. Don't be stupid. You know, go out there 10, 20 minutes or whatever you need to do to get, uh, get a little bit of uh, uh, some color. Uh, but don't tan. But, and uh, supplement. And supplement. We all need vitamin D supplements. And Dr. Mark Sorensen wrote a book called... Um, uh, sunshine and vitamin D, uh, something, I forget what he called it. Anyway, but he says that, uh, well, what point is he going to bring out? Anyway, it, it's great for the immune system. Um, and, oh, he said the, the, uh, that a tan, a light tan by going, not going, not overdoing it on the weekend, but a little bit every day, a tan slowly built up with no burning, no burning is the best defense against melanoma. Wow. How about that? It's the people who are in office buildings all week mm -hmm. and then go hard on the weekend and burn, 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 burn every weekend. Those are the people that get melanoma. Which, if you live in Canada, like we did for mm -hmm. many, many years, 
that's what most Canadians do, especially in the, yeah. the, the prairies, because you only get two months of yeah. summer. So you go hard in the summer <laughs> and you're inside all winter. So you definitely need to supplement and definitely not try and burn in the summer. Yeah. Now, Bob Marley, uh, the reggae mm -hmm. uh, star, yeah. uh, our dermatologist friend brought an interesting point to us that he died of melanoma wow. on his toe. So I don't know how that progressed and how that happened, but yeah, that's how Bob Marley, a black man, uh, died of melanoma on his toe. Wow. Interesting, because usually we associate that with white people, uh, but apparently it can happen to anyone. So, mm -hmm. all right, so number, uh, so the, the moral of the story here is don't burn. Above all, don't burn and take a supplement. I mean, that's, that's the way we do it. 5,000 every day, no kidding, especially now. Some people are even doing 10,000 a day. Is that too much? Nope, especially when you pair it with vitamin K2. That is a very right. important thing because too much vitamin D3 in the system uh, releases calcium and without K2, it doesn't have the signal as to where to go. And so it ends up in the blood, ends up in the joints, that kind of thing. So right. uh, that's, doing, that's if you're doing a lot of vitamin Ds. But uh, it's always wise to take vitamin D3 with K2, okay? So it's K2 kind of ushers it, uh, ushers the calcium where it needs to go. Got it. So there you go. Uh, D3, K2, calcium, it's all associated. Now, number six, take liposomal vitamin C. Vitamin C, everybody knows, improves the immune system. I mean, that's why people take that emergency stuff, but there's something a heck of a lot better. It's liposomal vitamin C. Uh, if you can find it, it's a lot more available now. When COVID-19 yeah. first started, it was kind of mm -hmm. hard to find. Uh, we have it, of course, at LairdWellness.com. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the people have it. Why liposomal vitamin C? What's liposomal? Vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin. And long story short, it doesn't get absorbed into the cells very well because uh, the cells kind of have a fat membrane around the outside. Right. And uh, vitamins that are fat soluble, A, D, E, and K, for example, are all fat soluble vitamins, uh, get stored in the body uh, for that very reason. They, they have their, their fat soluble. And so they, they tend to cling on to the body uh, for a longer period than the uh, water soluble vitamins. Water soluble vitamins, whatever you don't um, so use like up in that day, release. time release, yeah. Thank you. Whatever you don't use in the day, it gets excreted out in your urine, your feces, or sweat, or whatever. Which are which? Uh, Sorry? The water-soluble? Uh, water-soluble are uh, all the B vitamins, C, uh, C. Uh, those are the major ones. And so... Which we need every day. Which we need every day. So liposomal vitamin C is treated with liposomes. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's processed with liposomes. What that does is basically it wraps a fat membrane around the vitamin C molecule and makes it act like a fat-soluble vitamin. So a whole lot more vitamin C gets absorbed mm. into your cells when it's liposomal vitamin C. Got it. Lipo, just think of it as lipo. Liposuction takes yeah. out the fat. Lips, lip, uh, li lipo, right? Got it. Liposome. So it makes it like fat, like your cells. We have a, a question here. Yes. Uh, do we sell it? That's referring to the vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D3K2. Yes, we do. We have two kinds actually in the store. One is, is the high-dose take it once a week. That is mainly to ramp you up to a good vitamin D3 level. And after that, uh, what, I, what I would do if I were you is take vitamin D3 K2. So if you're low on vitamin D, uh, get the D3 that's uh, 50,000 50, IU per, per, uh, per capsule. And there's right. only 15 in the bottle, one five, 15. So that's for a reason. Yeah, so you take it for 15 weeks, be done with it, you know, do it maybe again next year, that kind of thing, and then uh, stick with the D3K2 from the Hallelujah Diet version. That's, and I've we done also that, that myself. Uh, I have was low on D3 mm -hmm. several years ago, and I took the 50,000 for one bottle's worth 15, and I brought it up to within a uh, good range, which then, once you bring it up to that good range, everything works well. Yep. Exactly. And then you can go on a maintenance. Yep, which is the D3K2 from Hell right. Diet. And it's still a fair, fairly good amount, but it has the K2 to deliver uh, the calcium where it needs to go. Right. Number seven, find a B complex, a good B mm. complex. Again, we have this in our store we if do. you want to. Yep. Uh, so, and why B? Because stress, uh, B vitamins are always for stress, right? Right. Uh, be happy with B vitamins, would I always say. And B for the brain. Because B vitamins are also very handy for the brain. Right. And, and people say where you get it from is meat. B12 you're talking about specifically? B12 specifically. Right. But how come that doesn't work typically these days? Because you the remember? cows aren't getting enough. Because their faces are not in the ground 
where the bacteria They're is factory fed. So right, the bacteria is what creates the B12 in the cow. So even, if they're if they're in a feedlot, mm -hmm. even if you're a meat eater, you're probably not getting adequate B12 unless you're only eating organic grass-fed grass -fed beef. Uh, and even then, yeah, it might be a little low because of okay, what's what's in the grass these days that the cow's eating? We don't know. I mean, if if it's organic grass fed, okay. And it's a lot of it, or is it sparse? You know, we don't know right. those things. If it's organic grass fed, that's fine because the fields that they're roaming in are not going to be sprayed with Roundup or anything like that. Right. Uh, but if they are, and it's just grass fed, but it's not organic grass fed, yeah, it's better than nothing. But still. B12, everybody needs B12. Let's just say that, okay? And it's not just B12. If you take B12 and not any other B vitamins, if you take an overabundance of any one of the B12 vitamins, B1, B2, uh, B6, B9, so B1 is, uh, is it riboflavin? Uh, yeah, no, thiamine, riboflavin, uh, so B1, B2, uh, B6, pyridoxine, um, B9 is folic acid, B12 is uh, methylcobalamin. Any of those, if you take any one of those on its own or too much of those on its own, it's actually going to create a deficiency in the others. That's why everybody always talks about a B complex because right. scientists know this. That's why they put them together and that's what we have is a B complex. B12, B6, B9. Right. Or folic, and we do folate, carry a folic folic really good B complex. That's the one, yeah, from Halia Diet. Yep, Very includes good. three of them and that's darn good and it helps relieve your stress and we just learned that stress causes uh, um, your immune system to go down, right? Mm -hmm. Number eight, reduce inflammation. Okay. Ah. So, uh, the most serious medical problem, says Dr. Russell Blaylock, such as diabetes, cancer, hypertension, strokes, and heart attacks occur in a person's middle years or beyond. That's obvious. Uh, the factor in all these conditions have is, uh, what they have in common is inflammation. Diet is critical. For reducing inflammation, he says, and a poor diet is primarily responsible for developing all of the conditions noted earlier. The major dietary culprits in triggering inflammation are, take notes, sugar, mm-hmm, yep, causes deficiency and toxicity. That's a nasty one. Uh, high glycemic products, we're talking about refined grains, processed foods, uh, omega-6 oils, basically all the oils in your pantry. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that's in a box, and usually. Yep, and food additives, and especially hydrogenated oils. You know how they make hydrogenated oils? They take a uh, a poly or monounsaturated oil. Okay. Which means polyunsaturated means multiple places in the molecular structure for hydrogen to bond with carbon, or monounsaturated, which means there's only one opportunity for so mono poly. You get it. Mm -hmm. And so, but what? can also happen there is, uh, well, first of all, hydrogenation. So what they do is take a polyunsaturated oil because it works better with machinery. It works better for foods and that type of thing, with processed foods. Shelf life. Shelf life, yep. So what the manufacturers are going to do is they're going to take that polyunsaturated oil, but saturated oils work better for shelf life because they're, they're more stable. Right. So what they do is they pump, they literally pump hydrogen gas into the oil. And for the hydrogen gas to occupy some partially hydrogenated or all of the spaces in the, in, the, in the molecular structure where carbon can bind with hydrogen, which would be called hydrogenated. Oof. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Hydrogenated. You're getting educated tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so what happens is that creates a stable fat that they can use in the food to put in the, the processed food, but guess what? It's also a fat that your body doesn't recognize because it was done artificially by man. So your body goes, hmm, I think I know what to do with this, and then puts it in all the wrong places, and that creates health problems. Long story short. Got it. So, yeah, don't do that. So, number nine, let's move on. I'm trying to go fast here, but we're not going to be done by nine because it's 8.59. Just hang with us for a few minutes. we got a few more real good ones here, and I want to finish this. So number nine, eat only grass-fed meats. We explain why. Right. Uh, here's something else. Uh, and there's something else to know. If you're going to eat grass-fed meat, you're going, woohoo, Scott told me I can eat grass-fed meat. <laughs> Which, okay, yeah, but even Russell Blaylock, and he's not a vegan or a plant-based diet, a uh, plant-based doctor, he says... Meats from animals that are pasture grazed and therefore classified as organic are generally healthy to eat in smaller amounts. Right. Four to six ounces, not that 24 ounce porterhouse. That's <laughs> no. for a family of six, go for it. 
not just for you. That's not healthy. Right. Four to six ounces, two to three times a week. And I'll tell you another reason why it's not healthy. You've heard us talk before about how much protein your body can take in at, in one sitting. 20 to 25 grams, that's about it. Guess Which what that is? Which is probably about three to four ounces. Three to four ounces at the most of any kind of meat. So there you go. That's another reason why. Otherwise, your body just stores it as fat. And that's what I was going to say. Women, if we eat anything over the 20 grams, it just stores it as fat and we don't want that. Yeah. And they used to have something on the menu. It's called the ladies portion. I don't think they do that for... Ew, yeah, no. They don't do that for uh, politically correct reasons. But guys... Take the ladies' portion. You're going to be doing yourself a favor and not adding to the old spare tire around the middle, okay? So, uh, now here's something, though, he says. All meats, all meats, you should be aware that all meats, even organic, are high in glutamate. And red meats are high in iron. And you're thinking, what's wrong with iron? I'm, I need iron, which is very absorbable. Right, because it's heme iron. Guess what? You're, there's heme iron and there's non-heme iron. Non-heme H-E-M-E, -E, iron, is in vegetables, non-heme iron. And people say, well, that's not that's not exactly good because it gets absorbed so slowly. The body likes doing things slowly, okay? Right. The ebb and flow of the way the body likes to do things, too hard, too fast, too much, that's why meat is bad for you. That's why John Wayne had how many pounds of raw Ooh. meat in his colon? Yeah, you know, look that, that up. Story. Look that up. That's it's crazy. disgusting. Okay, here's why... High iron is not good. Both high glutamate and high iron levels promote cancer growth as well as general inflammation, which causes all the other stuff. So you don't want to end up with cancer and heart disease, do you? Go easy on is, the meat. Inflammation is the beginning of every Everything. disease. Everything. Every disease. It just matters where in your body you have inflammation. Right. And here's a good point, Jody. Uh, what you just said leads us to number 10. Thank oh. you for that segue, right. which I don't think you even realized you did. I did not. Eat more vegetables. Why more vegetables? Because most vegetables contain substances that powerfully inhibit that inflammation. And it, uh, the inflammation that causes heart attacks, strokes, cancer growth, and cancer uh, invasion. I'm not sure what he means by that. Uh, the most important types of uh, are cruciferous vegetables and other nutrient-dense vegetables and tubers, such as kale, broccoli sprouts, broccoli, green leafy vegetables, spinach, garlic, onions, cauliflower, cabbage, all the stuff we know we're supposed to eat. And guess yeah. what? The, the hardest ones of those, like the, literally the hard ones, like uh, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, carrots, uh, onions, you know, spinach, all, all the hard ones, mm -hmm. you should steam first. Because it releases the nutrients, it makes it less, um, it releases more of the nutrition. Uh, and it also destroys the lectins. You may have heard, oh, we can't eat beans because they have lectins. As soon as you cook beans, the lectins die with heat, just like enzymes do, okay? So don't let anybody tell you, oh, you can't eat all these vegetables because they have lectins. Yeah, they have lectins, but especially the hard ones have a lot of it. Cook them. So Problem what about solved. then the enzymes if we're cooking them? Because that's just... You're going to get that from your green leafy vegetables that are very easy to digest. You're going to... So right? you're, eat your salad and cook your cruciferous. Right. And even uh, um, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, that's who I'm thinking of, he told me personally, he says, to steam uh, kale. So even though that's a green leafy, it still has the lectins. It's he wasn't, hard to eat if you don't steam it. it is, I guess it's. I guess it could be considered a hard vegetable, wouldn't it? So you steam that, uh, or or saute it in water, uh, and then you eat it, and you and you don't blend it. Like a lot of people, like I put spinach in my in my smoothie in the morning. That's okay too, but when you eat when you eat it, that's when you release the nitric oxide because I'm, that's another thing all these green leafy vegetables have. It releases the uh, nitrite. Nit and then it makes it turns it into nitrate. The, the saliva in your mouth turns the nitrite into nitrate, uh, or no, nitrates into nitrite, other, other way around. And then when, you're, when you swallow it, your stomach acid then converts it to nitric oxide. So cook them first, chew them, swallow them, perfect scenario. Got it. Okay, so now number 11. Well, how many are we doing? We're 14. Oh, 14. Yeah, so. I was thinking we were done. Uh, number 11, well, 10 would be a nice round number, but I couldn't stop. There are so many good things in here. Uh, number 11, trade out soda for white tea. White tea. Why white? white? We don't... Because it actually has 
uh, a great deal of protection for your immune system, it says here. Uh, and actually, it's even better than green tea. I like green tea. It's uh, good I for like stroke white. and heart attack prevention. I drink three cups a day while I'm sitting doing my work every day. Uh, white tea's good. You, you won't know yeah. the difference, really. Mm -mm. Um, uh, so the the and the the whiter the tea or the lighter the color of the tea, the better it is. So white tea's the best. Green tea second best. When you get into you know your orange picos and your black tea, is like, eh, okay, whatever. You might as well be drinking coffee doesn't have the same protective White effects. White tea, it seems to me, comes from a different part of the plant. I can't remember what that is. I'm going to look it up because yeah. I used to know that. I, I don't... Yeah, I don't really know. No, yeah. but it says uh, of all the uh, types of tea, white tea has the highest levels of healthy compounds as well as the lowest levels of fluoride. Hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, naturally occurring fluoride. And no caffeine. You can drink it warm or cold. Okay, well, there you go. The green tea has uh, some of the caffeine, uh, which I don't mind. I mean, green tea with caffeine does not give me the jitters like coffee does. No. Uh, for whatever reason. It's just, it's a different plant. Uh, it just reacts differently. Now, number 12. Hydration saves lives. This is another thing we're practicing, drinking more water. Yeah. And uh, I have to say that it, it has it's actually helped me Still not a very lot. good at it. it. Yeah, and it's changed a lot of things. I mean, I realized how bad I was at drinking water. I and now, so uh, now I'm getting better at it. It says, studies have shown that people, here's something scary, people who have excellent collateral circulation, so basically circulation in all of the blood vessels to the very tiniest, uh, in their heart muscle, rarely suffer from major heart attack, even when a blood vessel is blocked. Hmm. How about that? Unfortunately, in cases of dehydration, these micro vessels can collapse, reducing the total blood supply to the heart. So this is why dehydration uh, is so important because it's the small, people always think, oh, well, the bi it's the big bless, uh, blood vessels that if they're blocked, then you have the heart attack. Not necessarily, even the tiny ones. It's sort of like a domino effect. If the tiny ones are, are uh, if they collapse, everything else collapses. And then, Well, boom. and then if the tiny collapse, everything's got to go through the big. And then, yeah. Yep. And you know what? We're probably all dehydrated. Yep. We all need to probably get better at this. And it says here, uh, as I talked about um, cancer with my family, obviously heart disease. My dad dying of a heart attack. That's all obviously, too. Uh, it's something I need to be looking at. So if you have a history of heart disease, especially angina... It is important to keep yourself well hydrated at all times. In fact, one of the primary factors precipitating a heart attack is dehydration. Huh, didn't know that. Uh, let's move on to number 13. Uh, oh, this is an easy one. Probiotics. Take care of your gut. Yeah. Prebiotics wow. and probiotics. You remember what pre prebiotics are? Mm, no. Prebiotics are the food for probiotics. Uh, and so you can take prebiotics and probiotics. Uh, prebiotics are the food for your microorganisms. Uh, that's the way Dr. Uh, Blaylock puts it. And he says the best uh, prebiotic is galacto... Uh, oh, man, I forget how to say this. <laughs> Oligosaccharides. There you go. G-O-S, basically. Uh, it's a supplement. It, it just helps you out a little bit, especially in these this day and age when our... our uh, our bacteria is so messed up in our gut, you want to feed the probiotic and of course then take a probiotic or eat some fermented foods like kimchi right. and pickles and sauerkraut. sauerkraut, all that good stuff. Kombucha. Kombucha, yep, all good stuff. Um, Go ahead. Listen, your gut is connected to your brain. Yes. That's the bottom line. And if you don't protect your gut, it will affect your brain. Yes, because there is a, a little information superhighway between your gut and your brain. It's a separate nervous system called the enteric nervous system. Uh, basically, the word enter with IC at the end. Enteric nerv nerv bleh, nervous system. Look it up. So basically, that's why if you are gluten sensitive, uh, it can affect your behavior. Because where does your behavior come from? Your brain. So if your brain doesn't have the food it needs, the first thing to suffer from uh, poor gut health is your brain. And that will manifest itself in uh, behavioral problems. Uh, in fact, some people who've had bipolar disorder, they, they've, they find out that they've got really bad gut. No one thought to look in their gut. The problem's in the brain. They keep looking at the brain. So when they clean up their gut, it's usually a leaky gut kind of problem with these people that, that are able to reverse these conditions. Um, they correct the gut, 
take probiotics, everything's flowing smoothly, the bacteria in the gut is happy, and all of a sudden, wow, no more behavioral disorder. Yeah. It well, just kind of disappears. We know that firsthand, and I know we've said this over and over, but we know it firsthand because we went through it with our son, Van. Mm -hmm. When he was four, we realized he had some issues because he started getting facial tics, mm -hmm. and he had some rage issues, and we took him off of gluten. Uh, after doing some reading and within a few weeks um, maybe close to more of a month his facial tic stopped his behavior he calmed way down mm -hmm. and then we did some experimenting and we let him eat some bread for three days in a row three days in a row after eating that bread his facial tics came back yep and another thing that sort of uh, helped him just even keel is a really good full spectrum CBD yeah uh, of course no THC it's just it's full spectrum CBD oil uh, comes from uh, what's the place called Lazarus really good stuff uh, Lazarus naturals or something like that it comes in a syringe why does it come in a syringe because you don't want to introduce oxygen because it will um, right cause the oil to become rancid right. which that goes back to the hydrate hydrogenation thing I was talking about those same mono and polyunsaturated fats that have an opportunity for hydrogen to move in uh, when they, those bonds will also accept uh, oxygen instead of hydrogen and so when that happens we said an oil has become oxidized or rancid, rancid that smelly oil yeah mm. and now that's what happens when uh, with the CBD oil that you normally get that comes in a dropper but this place called Lazarus uh, they put it in a giant syringe it's, it looks like a huge horse horse vaccine or something right and uh, they do that so that no air is ever sucked back into the CBD oil it just pushes it out when it's done it's done if you have ever had CBD oil that hurts your throat it's rancid yep same thing and uh, uh, olive oil uh, that's your or coconut oil coconut oil yeah now coconut oil will not go rancid as quickly as olive yeah, oil but because when you do have it it's terrible it's awful yeah it's terrible. and that's something where something's gone really wrong with the coconut oil because coconut oil is a saturated fat what is it saturated with hydrogen so when it starts to break down, that's when you start getting the, uh, the rancidity. But if it's good coconut oil, it should be good for a long time. And by the way, if you have coconut oil and it's in your shelf, uh, you, you might notice that during the summer months when it's really warm out, it'll get liquid. Right. That's okay. It can go from liquid to solid, liquid to solid, liquid to solid. Doesn't matter. It's just a temperature thing. At room temperature, saturated fats are solid. Anything warmer than that, they're liquid. Poly and monounsaturated fats at liquid temp uh, at room temperature are liquid. Funny story. I bought uh, brought two fat bombs to work today, uh -huh. and they are almond flour um, mixed with some cacao and some Lily's chocolate chips, protein powder, plant based, and coconut oil. That's mm -hmm. how it all puts it together. I left it on my desk for about a half hour. I came back and it was <laughs> melted it was <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> But all I did, it was still in a Ziploc bag. Oh, good. So I just okay. threw it in the fridge for 10 minutes, and it was good to go again. And now you got a flat cookie. I did. It was more, <laughs> actually looked like a piece of poo because it was... That's lovely. <laughs> I still ate it. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> and finally, if you've ever had a kidney stone, mm. thank God and Lord may I never have one. Uh, yeah, kidney stone. I can't relate. So a valuable trick says Dr. Russell Blaylock, for treating acute cramping in the stomach or intestines is to mix a scoop of magnesium citrate powder hmm. uh, with six ounces of water and drink it all at once. He says, just, just down it. The magnesium relaxes the smooth muscles in the intestines, which magnesium does to all muscles, including the heart. Uh, calcium contracts muscles, magnesium releases them. So to have the heart pumping the way it's supposed to, you need to have calcium and magnesium. Calcium you can get mostly through your diet. You don't need to supplement no. calcium. Magnesium is one of those minerals that for whatever reason in our soils these days is just not there. So it's not available for the, the, uh, for the vegetables to uptake nor for the animals eating the vegetables if you're going to eat right. meat to uptake. So uh, magnesium is something you need to supplement. So he says the magnesium relaxes the smooth muscles of the intestines that cause the cramping pain. Hmm. This works with food poisoning as well. Huh. And can also be used to stop the pain of a kidney stone. Not Interesting. Not to mention magnesium is great for headaches. Yep. And migraines. Yeah. You. Uh, when you. Uh, how many do you take when you do like uh, when you start 
noticing you're going to get a if migraine. If I start getting an ocular migraine, which is very rare, it used to happen all the time mm -hmm. when I drank diet sodas Ooh. 13 oh. years ago. But now it happens maybe once a year, and I know it's coming because the day before I've done something like painted or something that was toxic. And the next day, without a doubt, I'll start getting an ocular migraine mm. and I'll take four magnesium. I used to go right to the Excedrin right fast with the caffeine, but now four magnesium will stop it mm. and I won't get to the point where I throw up because if I don't do something, I will throw up. Now, an ocular migraine, so people know, is that the stars around your peripheral like vision, aura. right? Yeah. And then it starts, I had it once where it just came on like that and half my vision and both eyes went gray. It was like trying to see around hands like this, and you just you couldn't see. It's scary as heck. Uh, and so what that is is basically the blood vessels um, collapsing in your eyes and not providing blood to the eyes, which is which is what you need to see. And so that's why it's an ocular eye migraine. Interesting. So so it relaxes the quick, muscles, let them go. Let's real go. quick before yeah. we wrap up. Mm -hmm. What supplements should we be if you know in a perfect world? If you have enough money, but uh -huh. say you don't want to take everything, yeah, you don't what want supplements should we take every day? Okay, I always tell people it's like uh, it's like your ABCs, but it's your ABCs and Ds. So vitamin A, think of don't don't take retinal palmitate, vitamin A in a supplement. Just eat your vegetables. You, you'll eat get vitamin veggies. A. Okay, so that's your A. B, your B take complex. your B complex. C, take your liposomal vitamin uh, C. In uh, and D. Get out in the sun, or if you can't get out in the sun, if it's winter or you live in a place that's not very sunny, uh, D3. Okay, what about magnesium? Is magnesium, uh, yeah, I mean, that's handy for taking at night to help me sleep is what I like to take it for. Uh, it, it, helps, it helps with, uh, it, it's all depending on the person, right? Right. Like I, if I have heart palpitations or something like that, if I drink too much coffee or something like that, I'll take ma magnesium, shh, calms it right down. Uh, and of course, there's all kinds of things that are good for people, uh, depending on what's going on in your body or whatever. But as yeah. far as a baseline, you always talk, hear me talking about a baseline for all human diets. I don't care what kind of diet you want to do. You've got to start with fruits and vegetables. You've got to make that your base. Uh, and so I start with that and your ABCs and Ds. Beyond that, it all has to do with who you are, what color your skin is, where your background is from, what kind of things you got going on in your family. Issues, and, yeah. And you can take different risks here and there, uh, and you just kind of have to explore it from there. Uh, we can help you determine that if you want. I mean, we offer uh, sure. wellness consultations. You can talk to us. Uh, basically, you know, tell us what your lifestyle is, what your background and is. And then we're going to tell you to write down everything you eat for three days. Yep. And that basically tells us, in a, once we see that, we can tell in a nutshell almost immediately like oh this is why this person's got that going on this and this and this we will give you a call back and say hey why don't you try taking this out try doing this instead and uh, you can see on our reviews everybody loves it we talk really down to earth um, so th this is not a sales pitch to do the <laughs> do the wellness consultation but uh, but if you if you want to find out some things we would be more than happy to, to show you how to do that so that you're not guessing and buying every supplement under the sun right. and not knowing what you're doing which I would do I would eat every supplement under the sun and every superfood under the sun yeah. I would live on superfoods if I could. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you uh, probably, we'll see you next week, but not the week after that. We are actually going to the beach with our family. Our kids are coming to hang out with us at the beach. So uh, next week, though, we will see you for another edition of Laird Wellness Live. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.